have access to Khan Academy. So I've mm-hmm. been using it, but not consistently. Um, but at the same time, I feel that it doesn't really give me the the basics, the fundamentals of how it all works in a sense, or how should I be approaching uh, the LSAT. That's why I went ahead and purchased your your course, your one month course. Um, but I haven't been able to fully commit to it. Um, I'm trying to balance a full-time job. So by the time I get home, I'm usually just overwhelmed. Uh, I can't focus much. I can't find, I'm struggling with finding a plan of attack, you know, something I can really just stick with um, to study and also the reviewing. Um, I've noticed that I don't review, especially with uh, Khan Academy. I just go through the questions, and if I, you know, get it right, I get it right, and if I don't, then I move on. So I know you've mentioned the Socratic method, but um, I haven't really digged into it to really come up with a plan. So in other words, I'm struggling here. (laughs) Gotcha. Gotcha. Totally understood. We can talk about all of that. So when it comes to putting in the time, I understand it's challenging to study with a full-time job, but what about the weekends? The weekends, I am free. I am uh, available. Um, Just once a month, I do have the fellowship for eight hours. But besides that, um, I guess it's, it's just balancing a full day, you know, a full week and then feeling like I deserve the weekend off. But what do I really want here? Right. Priorities in the sense. Um, so weekends, I could definitely invest the time. Great. What's your target test date? Uh, August. Okay. So you've got some time. Okay. And we're speaking now. It's what is it? It's mid April. So you've got yeah. a good four months or so till the exam. And that can be a good thing and a bad thing. It can be good because you've got all the time in the world, but it could be bad because you've got all the time in the world. So you'll do it later. So we've got to see what can we do to apply a little bit of useful pressure, positive pressure so that you can focus on the LSAT in the short term. And then whatever else you have going on on the weekends, you can minimize and push to after the August LSAT. So tell me about your weekends. What else is going on? Well, weekends, I usually try to take care of everything I don't get a chance to do during the week. (laughs) But uh, besides that, I just try to get a break. Um, I'm trying to, when when I first began the fellowship in January, um, I was pushing myself to study every day, every day. And I got a lot of anxiety. So I had to take a step back. And like you said, you know, I felt in January, February that I had enough time. But now I feel like, you know, next thing you know, it'll be August. But um, we're starting late May, early June. And I personally feel that it won't be enough time for me. Um, Just how I've been studying and how I've been feeling about the LSAT itself. I don't think... uh, uh, I would do well in it. Um, so that's sort of where I'm at. <laughs> well, you don't want to lose the next month and a half when you right. could be using that time productively. And I understand about catching up on personal things on the weekend for sure. I guess I would ask you, what's what's your job like? Are there ways that you could reduce the intensity level of your job while still fulfilling your responsibilities so that your weekday evenings are not as, you're not as tired by the time you get there? Um, What I'm trying to do is try to work from home a few days out of the week, because even the commute takes a lot of time. You know, that means I'm at work or I invest almost 10 hours because I'm here eight and then the commute one hour, one hour. So it's about 10 hours of my day just for work alone. and so by the time sometimes I have to get home, uh, make dinner or do whatever I have to do. And the next thing you know, it's nine o'clock. So it doesn't give me a lot of time because by nine o'clock, I just want to go to bed. Uh, 
But um, this week, though, I did. I've been trying to at least commit to one hour in the evening before bed. Um, even though I am a morning person, and I feel that I would take more advantage or, you know, I would gain more from it if I study in the morning. That means I have to wake up. I have to be studying at five, six in the morning. Yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy. Um, I think it's a good idea to work from home whenever possible and save those two hours that you're losing to a commute. What's your commute like? Is it driving or public transport? Driving. Okay. Driving. I was going to ask because maybe you could study on a train or something. I mean, driving, I there's not yeah, driving. I mean, driving, you could listen to one of my else unplugged podcasts. That's something you could do to at least absorb some else that information. It's not a substitute for studying, but it's mm -hmm. a way to keep your head in the LSAT game versus anything else you could listen to. So I, that's a suggestion for when you're driving, just listen to the podcast. But ideally, I think, yeah, working from home will save you some time. And then you wouldn't have to study at 5 or 6 a.m. You could study at hypothetically 8 a.m. And, and then start work at 9 or 9.30 or whenever you start it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've even, you know, come up with this plan where I would wake up at 4.30 in the morning <laughs> and get a workout because I'm also struggling with that. Uh, uh, you know, I, it's uh, the workshops that we've attended, they keep emphasizing, take care of yourself first, you know. So if I'm not taking care of myself, how can I really invest my time or even myself into the LSAT? Um, so I'm trying to get a balance going where I work out, do work, and also study for the LSAT. So I'm trying to balance it all out, but obviously it hasn't worked out. Uh, I cannot wake up at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> either or, you know, it's either I work out or I study. So I hear you on that. I mean, so I have a few thoughts. One is that, I mean, the 4.30 a.m. wake up, workout study, it's fantastic if you can pull it off. It's definitely not for everybody, and I wouldn't want you to go to the extreme with it from the start and then not be able to maintain it. I would say maybe try to get there, but only gradually. What time do you wake up right now, typically? 5.30. Okay. That's, that's already pretty early. So that's yeah. good, good on you for that. <laughs> if you want to push it a little bit earlier, just do it in five or 10-minute increments. So 5.25, then 5.20, then 5.15 work your way backwards, make sure you're going to bed earlier. This is not going to work. And then never hit snooze on your alarm or it just becomes a cycle. Huh, right. And then, you know, and then just make sure you're going to bed early, but maybe you do 30 minute workout and 30 minute studying. And then as you wake up a little bit earlier, then you can make it a 35 minute workout and a 35 minute study period. So it doesn't have to be zero to a hundred. Yes or no. It could be gradual and incremental, just like doing five push-ups is better than doing zero. Doing five LSAT problems is better than doing zero. And doing one is better than doing zero. You could do something where like before you drive to work in the morning, when you drive, like while, you're, while your coffee is brewing, if you drink coffee, you do a single LSAT problem. Something is better than nothing. And then you can just build it up little by little. And then I want to make sure we talk weekends also, because I... Get it. I agree with you that weekends, it's valuable relaxation time, personal, family, friends, all of that. But again, it doesn't have to be yes or no. It could be that you do an hour or two in the morning, and then the rest of your weekend is free. That's true. <laughs> so just try to carve. Just try to carve out the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, I know you've mentioned we shouldn't take any diagnostic tests, but our fellowship, they actually asked for those. So initially we had to take one and I took it and it took me four hours, <laughs> four hours and I got a 144. But um, now we're encouraged to take a practice test every month. And my second test, I got a 133 obviously time I'm not meeting any time um, and when I'm practicing I notice I've started I've started to get more answers correct 
but I'm still not meeting any of the times. And like I said, I'm not reviewing. Uh, I, I believe you do have a, a video on the Socratic method, correct? I think I, I saw it where you yeah, I have talked several. about it. I have several. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's just definitely something that I want to learn how to study for it. You know, one thing is me practicing and just doing problems and problems, but I really want to study it, learn how to study it. And I haven't tried any of the logic games. And you said that's the most, um, uh, that's the, the section you can really learn, like really uh, get higher score, correct? That's right. Yeah. So a couple of comments. Here. Yeah. So a couple of comments. One is that LSAT logic, logic games is typically the most intimidating at first, both the most learnable and the most perfectible. So you will get there. It takes some time to familiarize yourself and build the habits and best practices, but it is extremely learnable. Please do not be discouraged by those diagnostic scores. This is, this is why I say don't do them because they're so often discouraging. I get that you're in this program where it's baked into the curriculum. That's fine, but really don't place any importance on those diagnostics. Simply use them as a benchmark later to show you how far you've come. So later when you're getting 150s and 160s and 170s, you can look back and say, wow, I started in the 140s. I even got a 133 that one time. Look how much I've learned. Use them for that and nothing more since you happen to have those numbers already. But of course, your scores are going to be low because you haven't learned it yet. And you even mm -hmm. said you haven't been able to put in the time that you've wanted because of work, because you're busy. It's totally understandable. It does not reflect where you will end up at all. And so regarding the review, you said you haven't really done it. And that's where the biggest breakthroughs come from by actually learning from your mistakes, figuring mm -hmm. out which traps you are prone to falling for emphasizing and analyzing them so you can avoid making the same mistakes again. I've noticed that uh, with, um, what section is it? Uh, well, both logical reasoning and reading comprehension, I've noticed that I pick my first answer choice, but then I start overthinking it and I switch my answer and it's incorrect. So usually my first option is the right answer. Um, so I have started seeing that pattern lately. What do you suggest I do? <laughs> so, I mean, the fact that you switch is normal. It's normal to second guess yourself. This is where the review process comes in. So look at the tempting wrong answer and the right answer that became unappealing once you looked at another one and see what are the small nuances, the small differences that make a tempting wrong answer tempting, but ultimately wrong. And what makes a right answer right, but also what makes it unappealing. It'll be these small differences in word choice. A single word can make all the difference and completely change the meaning of the answer choice. And this takes a lot of time. It can take a good 30 minutes or more to analyze one single logical reasoning question, for example, in depth. It could take over an hour to really review and analyze a logic game in depth. And mm -hmm. so when you're working full-time, especially, it's hard to find the time to both do LSAT problems and review them along with going to live classes and watching the course lesson videos and such. So you can't properly do this in just three to five hours a week and do it comprehensively. One of the things I mentioned will end up not happening or barely happening. And so you see how much more you could get if you did 10 hours in a week or 15 or 20. And so when you think about like changing your habits to wake up even earlier and carve out time on the weekends, like any gains you get will be beneficial. You have four months. So those changes in your schedule do not have to happen overnight. And I don't want it to be counterproductive where it ends up backfiring because you hit the snooze button when you try to wake up at 4 a.m. and it just does not work out. So play with it gradually and you'll get there. But every 5, 10, 15 minutes that you get can then get applied to ideally the review process if that's what has not been happening at all relative to the other 
types of studying. Okay. I also feel that I'm overwhelming myself because I'm doing Khan Academy. I also have the LSAT trainer and then I now have your course. So I'm having trouble trying to just focus on one at least, you know, and get a rhythm going. Um, what do you suggest I do? <laughs> I well, obviously, just keep... obviously just use my resources, obviously. <laughs> uh, I mean, but, but really though, I mean, I, I think it's wise to, with a limited schedule, pick one thing and focus on it. Mm -hmm. If you had, let's say hypothetically, you had 30 hours a week to study, then you could do a bit from here, a bit from there, mix and match resources. But with more limited time, you have to make choices. And like I said, there's doing problems, there's reviewing problems, and there's reviewing fundamentals or foundational material, which could include videos or books. There mm -hmm. is also the live class element as well. That's another thing to do. So you pick which learning style that suits you best. Some people will hole up in the library for a while and just do problems. Some will hole up in the library and do textbook-like resources. You pick what best fits your natural learning style. And you spend time on that. It's, a, it's as simple as that. With more time, you can then look at multiple sources on the same thing. So for example, if you wanted to focus on grouping logic games, you could look at my lesson videos on grouping logic games, attend the live classes we have on grouping logic games, and then look at the relevant chapters and videos and the other resources. Um, so since I have those four months, how many hours do you think I should try to invest realistically? Yeah, sure. So uh, let's budget it out reasonably here. So let's say that Monday to Thursday, you carve out one hour per day. That could be a half hour in the morning plus a half hour in the evening or all in the morning or all in the evening. That's four hours Monday to Thursday. Then you've got, let's say Friday, you just take off because you don't want to study after work on Friday, hypothetically. Then you've got Saturday and Sunday, you could do three hours Saturday, three hours Sunday. I'm going to suggest you carve out like nine to 12 mm -hmm. on both days. And then you are giving yourself 10 hours. Okay. How does that overall seem to you? Is there anything, obviously the details will vary, but does that seem hypothetically reasonable on the broad picture? Honestly, it does. Because like I said, weekends, unless I have my workshop, I don't, besides doing, you know, personal errands, I can definitely invest three hours. I don't, I mean, I can watch a TV show for three hours. So <laughs> of course I can. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Awesome. <laughs> cool. All right. So that's 10 hours right there. Then we can work up from that with time. So any gains that you make waking up earlier. Mm -hmm you can devote half of those gains to LSAT and half of them to working out if you want to. And so that was the, let's say, mid-April to mid-May schedule. But over the course of this month, if you can gain five, 10 minutes every day or so, that'll add up. There is a ceiling on that because you're not going to wake up at 3 a.m., but you can gain another like 20, 30 minutes a day, Monday mm -hmm. to Thursday. And then if you are able to go to bed early on Friday and Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights, I'm not saying early, like 8, 8, 8 PM. I'm saying early, like 9, 30, 10, mm -hmm. you could then still wake up 6 AM on the weekend, 6, 30, 7 AM on the weekend. And then you can make sure those three hours happen and still even do a workout before the three hours, or you can maybe make it four hours or a four hour block with a break in the middle. Hmm. I'm just giving you things to think Obviously, about. Yeah. Yeah. Things You're actually putting with. things. Yeah, definitely. You know, because usually I think studying, it has to be straight, you know, two, three, four hours, but um, you're really putting everything into perspective and it's definitely doable. Awesome. Yeah. No, there should be breaks within those blocks. It's too much to do four, four hours or three hours even with no break. I mean, even the LSAT has a break in the middle. Right. 
Okay. So right now, I definitely shouldn't be focusing on time. Definitely. Right? I'm, definitely. Okay. Not. Just accuracy okay. for now. Okay. So yeah, because Khan Academy, even the, your practice sections, um, they're all time. So like I said, I usually don't make any of the times, but I'm trying right now. I'm trying to just ignore it, even though, you know, here and there it does get to me, but it'll be definitely something out of focus for the moment. To be. Awesome, Cynthia. Uh, what else before we wrap up? Any other questions, any other concerns you have about getting into this more? No, I think for now that you pretty much answer my questions and definitely reassured me, <laughs> which, you know, I really thank you for that. Um, but I'll definitely just, you know, go back to your, to your courses and s start diving into it. Uh, you know, and I think what will help me is to schedule my weekends just as I do every day as if I'm working, you know, they start thinking of it like that. I know you've mentioned that we should think of the LSAT as a part-time job. So maybe I should start considering it. And, you know, that way I can schedule my time over the weekend and just definitely make it a priority. Awesome. Well, I'm excited for you to take these steps. It was great to meet with you and keep me posted on how it's going. Reach out if you need anything at all. I'm here for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.